take a look at page 8 of your problem set. Alright, what they wanted you to do is you take the rational numbers that they give you. In this case, it's two fractions, one-fourth and negative one-half. Okay, which one's greater? Charlie. Obviously one fourth. And really you don't even really you really don't need to even think about positive and negative. If it's positive, positive positive whatever is always greater than negative whatever. Okay, you don't need Uh-huh. Uh, over a negative number, yes. Zero is always greater than a negative number. Okay? So you don't really need to convert this to decimals or anything. If you see one positive and one negative, automatically positive is always greater. Now what they wanted you to do here is take the original rational numbers and make them into opposites. So Bella, what's the opposite of negative one-fourth? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, positive one-fourth. What's the opposite of that? Negative. Kind of give you the answer, but that's okay. What's the opposite of negative one-half? Okay, now look at those two rational numbers and which one's greater? Steven. Say it, because that's the whole gist of this homer. When you take the integer opposites or the rational number opposites, what automatically happens to the inequality symbol? Hold it. The audience can't hear you. Uh, <laughs> uh, the inequality. Inequality symbol goes the other way. Thank you, Anthony. All right, very good. All right, so that's the pattern throughout. That's the whole idea, because you're doing the same thing for every set of integers or rational numbers. You make your whatever's greater, opposites, flips the sign. Alex. That's okay. If you need to convert something to a decimal to figure out the initial inequality, that's fine. But then, really the shortcut is, is when you flip the symbol or take the opposites, you don't even have to think about it. The inequality will flip. Okay? So now, that being said, watch what I'm going to do just to take a little bit of a shortcut. I'm just going to write the symbols you should have had going down each column. Okay? So check your symbols. Okay. Uh, it, it takes some time, I know, to rewrite all of the numbers again. And really, the, the more important part is, is, did you get the inequality symbol correct? So what you should have is greater than. Okay, again, that's another example where the positive is always greater than the negative. Ready? Here comes the rest. Four in a row, right? Yep, four in a row. All right, so you have, look, uh, um, greater than, less than. Then you have greater than four times, less than, less than. Wow. Ra raise your hand if you got them all right, that first column. That's good. That's good. Okay, so then in this column, I'm not going to write them out, but you would do the opposites, and then every inequality symbol is going to flip if you do it right. So... This one then becomes, I already did this here, but I'll do it again. It goes this way. That's what you should have going down that way. And I'm going to show you another reason where this may come in handy to know this little trick. It might help you, it might not, we'll see. But before we do that, if you take a look at number two, really number two is really the summarizing question of what they're trying to get you to learn. They're saying that if I give you two rational numbers, A and B, and I tell you that A is less than B, then what has to be true about their opposites? Bridge, go ahead. Absolutely, but you got to come up because this won't stretch out. Put this on your scarf. Absolutely not. A bit. All right, hold on. Here, grab it and clip it because I'm in a bad angle here. Okay, so let me fill this out. So negative A, negative B, and while you're talking, you can put the symbol in. It could be like me. A must be more than B. Go for it. So well, negative A must be more negative than B. Negative A must be, be, be 
A negative A must be more than negative B. Thank you. Take a bow, even though they can't see you on TV. Yeah. There you go. I'm yeah. around the yeah. Yeah. Take a yeah. 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 Thank you for guest hosting. All right. One more thing I want to show you with, with this that uh, maybe it helps you, maybe maybe it doesn't. I, I don't know, but it's just another little strategy. Uh, don't write this. Just look. Okay. Start you off basic. If I give you five and four, which one's greater? If you're going to play, play right. Five. Good. Say it again. Five. Thank you. Five's greater than four, right? Okay. What about now? Oh, I think I know the trick. Kelly. I know the trick. Oh, I know okay. the trick. It's you switch it and then when you switch it when it's like a decimal to a positive and then when you see like which one's greater, it's opposite. That's kind of he's actually right. That's what I was getting at. If you get if you, I I think as as, a, as sixth grade students go. When it comes to negatives, it's a little bit harder to try to figure out which is greater. Okay, I think. Like even if I give you something like this, negative. Don't don't shout anything out yet. But if I give you negative three point one zero one and negative two point eight nine, let's just say. Okay, make believe that the negatives are not there. Okay, make believe it's positive three point one zero one and positive two point eight nine. If they were positive. What's greater, three or two? Because all, all we have to really look at is the ones. What's greater? Yeah, since you started, Ant, go. Three. Right. But because they're negatives, do the opposite of what you would do if they were positive. So, yeah, if there was no negative symbol there, I'd want to make it this way. But because they're both negative, flip it. Okay? That's just a strategy that could help you, but if it confuses you further... Then don't do it that way. If you want to, if you can visualize it better with a number line, negative three, negative two, because look, here's your zero. Well, when you do place value, yeah, but when you're doing when you're doing place value, you're doing it each digit at a time. So look, what I'm what, what I'm trying to show you, negative two. I'm making a number line. Here's negative three. Okay, yeah, it's a decimal, but. Just like when you line it up with a place value chart, you look at the ones first, and that's where it's different. So now you say to yourself, okay, I got negative 3, negative 2. Here's negative 3, here's negative 2, which is greater, which is further to the left, to the right, I'm sorry, to the right. 2. Obviously negative 2. That's why this is greater. Okay? So it's just another strategy. You, you, may, you may have to visualize it using a number line. Or you could do it the other way that I showed you, is make them both positives and then just do the opposite of what the positive outcome would be for the inequality. Wait, if we do that, will we have to use the thing? You're going to need the new. You're going to need the place value chart when I give you really complicated numbers. Look, Ant, this is this com this is one piece of it. N don't do this. But what if I give you this negative one point eight one six five three? And then negative 1.81657, okay? That you still have to take a look and see because here's where it differentiates. So you could still use the place value chart, okay? I will tell you this on the quiz and, and everybody else on the quiz. I am giving you place value charts to use when you need to use them. We don't have to. Listen to me first. Because you've got to make a decision. If you choose not to use it, and you get one, if I ask you to order four or five or even ten different numbers, if you choose not to use it, the place value chart, and you get one number out of wrong, out of, out of all of them, I don't give you partial credit. If, if you flip two numbers in the middle, it's all wrong, you lose ten points. But if you try to show me a strategy using place value table, place value chart, I'll give you half credit. That's the trade-off. So there's a lot to lose by you doing it the way that you want to do it, showing no work. And as you recall, we go back four or five days ago, we did a pinky swear, and you pinky swear that you're going to use a, a, a place value table. I want you to do it, okay? But like in anything, I can't force you to do it. If you choose not to do it, and you get one number out of place, 
I, I don't care if you beg for mercy, I am not giving you partial credit. Because you had your chance to get partial credit by doing the, the, the place value chart. Can you, like, do the smaller ones with that one? And then with the bigger ones? Tell you what. Tomorrow when, we give, when I give you the review, I'll show you examples where you really don't need one. If I give you a positive number and a negative number, you don't need a place value chart. <laughs> you got to know that. Okay, but I'll take you through the process tomorrow of when I would advise it strongly. How's that? Yeah. No, it will not. Okay? You'll see tomorrow. When you take the review tomorrow, the test, the quiz, it's a quiz. The quiz is exactly like the review you're going to do tomorrow. No, it's not easy. Some of it's easier than others. Yeah, it's when you get to when you get to that problem that has, I think it's ten rational numbers. It is not easy because there's just so many opportunities. I tell you what, let's talk about it tomorrow because I got to go to example one for today. Yeah. Do these dots mean etc.? I can't tell you. I can't tell you anything about that. Day two, example one. I. I believe it's page. Five. Five. Yep, five. Oh. All right, I'm going to take you through the examples here, and then you'll still have plenty of time to finish up the exercises and maybe even finish your homework. We'll see. All right, if you can, in example one, read the read the example on the bull face print. Okay, so they want to know a pretend amount of dollars, a, a dollar amount that's in between five and four dollars in your pocket. What is one possibility? Antonio. Uh, no Give it to me as a, a money figure, though. Four point two is how much money? Uh, four dollars. Okay, let's let's all do that. Is that the only possibility? For right now, follow through with my example, but if you had done it on your own. But what is 4.5 is money? All right, so there's other possibilities. Can Give me another possibility that is it's less than 5, greater than 4. Krista, which is how much money? $4.75. One more. Ryan. You got it. I'll tell, I tell you what, I'll give you a ticket for this. How many different possibilities are there? Alex Vecchio. Not 10. Um, Tom Tom. Can't hear you. Close. Zebo. Close. Jack. I think 90. Bella. 99. Ready? 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 Four dollars and one cent. Four dollars and two cents. Three cents. Four cents. All the way to 99 cents. You can't say five dollars because that's not less than five. It's equal to. You can't say four because that's not greater than. It's equal to. So there's 99 different possibilities. We're going to stick with four dollars and 20 cents. What? It's money. You can have change. You can have. We didn't count four, though. Right. We didn't count. We didn't count four. Four dollars and one cent. Four dollars and two cents. Three cents. Four cents. Dot dot dot. Ninety nine cents. That helps you. Just give you a little. I'll give you a little hint. Come and gone quickly. All right. Bella, come and get. But let's stay with four dollars and twenty cents for our example purposes. Just rip that off for yourself. Just be careful. With it. <laughs> Check. That wasn't very nice. And now it's out there in the entire world for them to agree with me. Of course. Back on track. Let's go. The, the clock's ticking on the camera. People don't want to hear you. They want to hear me. Well, they don't want to hear me either, apparently, judging by web hits. All right, here we go. So now we, we're going to stick with $4.20 for our example. So what we do is we're going to compare the $4 that they give you to $4.20. What's greater? 
watch TV. Okay. Then they want you to take the five dollars they give you, put that here, and compare that to that same four dollars and twenty cents. What's greater, Bridge? Okay, good. Now, with letter D, some of my advanced math went ahead on this yesterday. And what I'm going to do here might be a little different from what they did yesterday. Well, what do you I mean? I finished the number five packet. So what should I do? And then I just... Shh, hold on for one second. I'm going to get you started with six, but don't... Not yet. What they kind of wanted you to do here that I'm going to kind of do is a, a little mini lesson with you because I want to make sure you get it, is I'm taking my $4, my whole number four integer here, and my last line I'm going to make five. Because I want, no matter what, when I do it as a number line, the greater numbers always have to be to the right. I mean, like reading left to right. They always have to be, yeah, all well, that's going to confuse if, if I reverse it. So now, here's my question. What does it, in money, what is each line representing? <gasps> you got to kind of count it out to make sure. Kelly. Yeah, each one is now 10 cents, which now makes this 4.10. And look, guys, I'm not going to actually write it out, but 20 cents, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents, 70 cents, 80 cents, $4.90, cents, $5. Okay? Uh, do a little game for tickets. I'm going to put a dot on the line tell me how much money it is. Aiden. Correct. Come up and get. No, she didn't. He didn't. No. Four seventy. Four dollars and seventy cents. All right. Do this one. Oh. In the bucket. Liam. Correct. Go and get a ticket. Last one. Somebody come up and put a dot, ready, at $4.75. Alex Wicks. $4.75. That's it. Grab a ticket for yourself. I got one more for you. I didn't ask him period two. I just want to see if you're smart. Um, technically, how many monetary money lines would there be in between each line that I give you? Here's a line. Here's a line. How many lines in between? Uh... Kayla, not four. TK, nine. Nine, right? Every line being a penny, there's nine cents in between each dime, basically. Get a ticket, okay? All right, letter E. One more. Okay, let's have everybody quiet. What we're going to do now, which is kind of getting into the um, exercise that you're going to do, is we're going to do a, what's called a double inequality. I take my 4, I take my 5, and x is all of the numbers in between. Could be anything. We've, 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 listed, we've listed here um, in increments of 10, but it could be any one of 99 numbers. Which way does the inequality symbol go? And they're going to go, it's going to go the same way in between. So I need an inequality here and here. Less than or greater than, smiley. Come and do it, just so we're, sometimes it can get confusing. And that happens to be the less than symbol, because it's, that you say it, but you're right. Okay, and then do the other one. You got it, that's it. Okay? That's telling you that 
whatever number we come up with on this line, oh, the number is going to be greater than 4 but less than 5. See? Okay. Now let's go to the next screen and practice practice what they give you. First, let's do this first. Give me three integers. Integers in between negative seven and negative three. Michael. Negative four. Negative five. Negative six. Now, where do they get placed in the double inequality? And what goes here? Think. This is what I mean. You've got to watch it with your negatives. You have the you have the number right, but you forgot the symbol. What goes here, and then we'll talk. I'll talk you through it. What I would do is once you once you plug your numbers in. Double check and say it quietly in your head. Say to yourself, is no negative 6 less than negative 5? Yeah. Yes, it is. Think of a number line if you get stuck. Remember, we're talking on the left side of 0 now. So here would be negative 6. Here's your negative 5. Here's your negative 4. So yes, yeah, 6. Negative 6 is less than negative 5. Is negative 5 less than negative 4? Okay, now they switch to rational numbers. Same thing. If it helps you, okay, if it helps you, make a number line. 8 and 7. Here's your 7. I'll do it down here where there's more room. Here's your 7. Come on. Here's your 7. Here's your 8. I need rational numbers between 8 and 7. What would fit? Now we're obviously dealing with fractions or decimals. And I need 3. There's more than 3. Give me 3. Yeah, All right, I'm just going to write it down in no order just yet. Go ahead. Give me another one. Uh, I'm going to write it down. We'll get, we'll get. Oh, wait. Did you catch yourself? Yeah. 8.1 is greater than 8. It's not, it's not in between 7 and 8. Go. Uh, All of them are good. Let's put them in order. Technically, what we're doing, guys, is lowest to least to greatest. What's the lowest of those three? Oh, Kel, yeah, yeah, Kel. Followed by? Followed by? Let's just double check. Ask yourself, is 7.1 less than 7.8? Or 7.5? Is 7.5 less than 7.8? All right, three rational numbers between negative 12 and negative 11. And they're negative, so be careful. In fact, if I call you, come up to the board and do it. Charlie, come on up and do it. Pick a color and go. And if you want to put them right in, put them right in where they belong. A little tight. Got to squeeze it in there, but he, it looks good. Yep, that'll work. Okay, doesn't have to be the same three digits, three rational numbers that he came up with, but anything between eleven, negative eleven, and negative twelve will work. So he could have gone up. Uh, he could have gone eleven, negative eleven point nine, negative eleven point eight, negative eleven point one. He would be fine. Okay, and it kind of shows you all the all four different examples because now letter D has both a negative and a positive, but they are integers. So three numbers, and they have to be integers. And I will tell you that there is only three because either D, you either have it right or you don't. Uh, Stephen, what, what, Stephen, tell me what the what the integers are first, and then we'll order it. Um, zero. One, two. All right, let's put it in order. Zero, one, two. He's got it. It's at zero is less than one. One is less than two. Okay. When you guys do exercises one to three, just be careful. That chart that they show you at the bottom, 
you have to read the chart and the column headings because when you have to then go on to the next page, follow the directions of what they're asking you to do. Okay? Group up and go. I have the answer keys hanging up when you're ready.